Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today are fractional equations. So this should be familiar. This is a type of fractional equation, and this one here on the right too. They're called proportions. It's when two fractions equal each other. So you guys have learned that when two fractions equal each other, all you need to do is cross multiply, and that is correct. So let's cross multiply. So I have 2x times 2 is equal to 3 times x plus 3, and we'll distribute, so I get 4x equals 3x plus 9, and minus 3x, and I get 4x minus 3x is 1x equals 9. All right, let's take a look at the one on the right. Same thing, we're going to cross multiply here. So I'm going to have x times x plus 6 equals, cross multiply the other way, 8 times x plus 3. All right, so distribute the x, and we get x squared plus 6x. Yes, you're right, that is a quadratic. And distribute the 8, we get 8x plus 24. So since I do have a quadratic, and I know it's a quadratic because I have that x squared, and in order to solve a quadratic, it has to equal 0, we always want to keep our x squared positive. So that means I'm going to move this stuff on the right over to the left side. So move this stuff here over that side. All right, so I'm going to subtract 8x, subtract 24. Subtract 8x. I'll put it right underneath the 6x because they're like terms. And I'm going to get x squared. 6x minus 8x is negative 2x. Minus 24 is equal to 0. So hopefully you recall in order to solve a quadratic, uh, we can factor. So remember, I do the master product. So I multiply the first times the last. Hopefully you remember that. Multiply the first times the last. And I get negative 24x squared. And now I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to 24 and minus to give me a 2, that would be 6x and 4x. So I have 6x and 4x. They have to be negative uh, when I multiply because I need negative 24. But when I combine like terms, I need that negative 2. So I need a negative 6 and a positive 4. Bring down the end, negative 24. Make sure it still equals 0. And we have x squared in the front. And then we factor by grouping. So I put parentheses around the first two, around the last two. Then I do the GCF. So the GCF of the first two is x times x minus 6. And I have a positive here, so I have plus. GCF is 4 times x minus 6. Remember, your parentheses should be the same. And I have x minus 6, x minus 6. That means I know I did it correctly. My factors are the coefficients, so that's x plus 4 times x minus 6. The other uh, factor is what's in parentheses. And then remember, we do the t-chart, set them equal to 0, and we get x is equal to negative 4. When I subtract 4, add 6, I get x is equal to 6. Okay, so, um, so that's what we're going to be working on, but uh, they're not going to be proportions. They are going to be fractions, just not proportions. All right, so let's take a look at the fractional equations. We're going to write down some steps. They should be familiar from last year. Okay, so to solve fractional equations, the very first thing you're going to do is find the LCD. If you have a hard time finding the LCD, I will, um, you know, show you an easy way to uh, get a common denominator. It might not always be the LCD, but it'll be a common denominator that you could use. Um, sometimes to do this, you may have to... Uh, factor the denominators. So may need two factor denominators first. Okay, and then we will multiply all the numerators. By the LCD, you're going to reduce or simplify. And 
and then you're going to solve for your variable and then the last thing you have to do is you do have to check and what you're checking for are your extraneous roots check for extraneous extraneous means extra extraneous roots so those are roots that you get when you solve the equation but they don't actually solve the fractional equation and what you're really looking for with these are to see if you get anything that's undefined so you really just need to plug it in the denominator and make sure that nothing is undefined which means that you get a zero in the denominator if any one of your solutions gives you a zero in the denominator you need to cross it off that's called an extraneous root all right so let's take a look at the first one all right, so let's take a look at the denominators. Uh, I have an x, I have a 6, and a 2. x, 6, and 2. So I'm looking for the LCD. Now, I can't factor them. So start with the numbers. I have a 6 and a 2. You, your goal is to get rid of the denominators, eliminate the denominators. So start with the 6 and the 2. What number can you multiply all the numerators by? So it gets rid of the 6 and the 2. Think about that. What number do I need up top so it reduces with 6 and 2? And that's a 6. So I'm going to give all the numerators a 6. Right? So what happens here is that my 6 and 6 here will reduce to 1. And then my 2 and my 6 here will reduce to a 1 down here and a 3 up top. But the 6 and the x, they don't do anything for each other. So how do I get rid of the x? Think about what do you need up top so that you can get rid of the x? Well, you're going to need an x. So if you multiply one of them by x, you've got to multiply all of them by x. Whatever you multiply one by, you've got to multiply all of them by. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce. All right, so x, x and x reduce. So I'm left with 6 times 1 is 6. 6 and 6 reduce, so I'm left with plus 1x equals 2 and 6 reduced to 3 and 1, so I'm left with 3x. See how I got rid of all the denominators? I'm having a hard time with my stylus here. Here we go. All right, so now I'm just going to solve this. So minus x. And I get 6 is equal to 2x, 3x minus 1x is 2x, divide by 2, and x is equal to 3. Now what you want to do is make sure that you don't get anything that's undefined when you plug your solution. My solution here that I got is 3. So when I plug in 3 for x, do I get anything that's undefined? No. So therefore, this is a good answer. Sometimes what you'll see on the side when you see problems like this, you'll see... Uh, a semicolon like this, and you'll see x cannot equal zero. So you really don't need to worry about that because it's saying your x can't be zero. If you get a zero, you have to cross it off because that would be undefined then, okay? All right, so let's flip it over and try the ones on the back there a little bit harder. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, notice the denominators have an x minus 1, an x, and an x minus 1. Can't factor any of those. So if you have a hard time figuring out what the LCD is, say to yourself, what do you need in the numerator to get rid of each one of those pieces? So I want to get rid of the x minus 1 here. So what do I need up top to get rid of x minus 1? And you cannot do this. You can't do x and x. That's, that's a big no-no. Okay, so please do not do that. All right, so I need to get rid of the x minus 1. So what I need is another x minus 1. So I need x minus 1 up here. So remember, whatever you do to 1, you have to do to all of them. So if I multiply that by x minus 1, I've got to multiply this by x minus 1 and this one. Well, this is nice because this x minus 1 will take care of that x minus 1. So these are good here. This is good here. This you cannot do. Remember, you can't do this. So that does not help me. All right, so then how do I get rid of this single x here, the singleton? Oh, so then what I need is an x, just a single x. So put parentheses around this guy here. And I'm just going to move this down a little bit. All 
All right, so in order to get rid of that X, I need an X. So I'm going to give everybody gets an X. Okay? Now this X, this X here, will cancel out with this X here. All right, so now we're going to reduce. All right, so X minus 1 reduces with X minus 1, so I'm left with X, this X here, and X. So it's X squared, right? So X times X is X squared equals. This X reduces with this X, so I'm left with 2 times x minus 1, and then my x minus 1 and x minus 1 reduce, so I'm left with 1 times x, which is x. All right, so I'm going to distribute the 2, so I have x squared equals 2x minus 2 plus x. Combine like terms, the x, 2x and x, so it's x squared equals 3x minus 2. Uh, it's quadratic, so it has to equal 0, so I'm going to move everything over to the left, so minus 3x, add 2. So I get x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to solve this. I'm just going to move every, try to move everything up. Okay, so I'm going to do the master product, multiply the first times the last. So x squared times 2 is positive 2x squared. So what numbers multiply to 2 add to 3 would be 2x and 1x. They have to be the same sign, so they're both negative. That's how I get my negative 3x. Bring down the 2. Bring down the x squared. And now I group and factor. So my GCF is x times x minus 2. I have a negative inside the parentheses, so it's negative 1 is the GCF times x minus 2. So my factors are x minus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. We do our t-chart. I get x is equal to 1, right? And x is equal to positive 2. Now you have to check this. So this is what I'm checking for. So look at my original equation. Oops, sorry. Look at my original equation. And look what happens when I plug in 1. So I have 1 over 1 minus 1. Well, this can't happen because then I get 1 over 0. And 1 over 0, that's undefined. So this will not work. So that's called an extraneous root. So you have to make sure you cross it out. All right, now what about when I plug in 2? Well, 2 will be good because... Oops, sorry. So that's extraneous. So 2 will be good because when I plug in 2... I'll have uh, 2 over 2 minus 1 is 1 equals 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's good. So my solution is 2, my only answer. Remember, 1 was an extraneous, didn't work as me undefined. All right, let's try the problem on the bottom. Okay, so I noticed that in the denominator, I have this uh, trinomial here. And that trinomial can be factored. These two binomials here, this one and this one cannot be factored. But I can factor this one. So when you factor this, and this usually does happen when you have a trinomial and other binomials, this factors and becomes, you can do it on the side, x plus 3 and x minus 2. So notice that th these factors here are the same as these two denominators. Okay, so I'll just cross that off now. All right, so... Say to yourself, what do you need in the numerator to get rid of the x minus 2? Well, you need an x minus 2. So x minus 2, everyone gets x minus 2. Okay, so the x minus 2 here takes care of this. x minus 2 here takes care of that, but it does nothing here. I'm still left with x plus 3, so that means you've got to multiply everything by x plus 3. So put it right on top. So that means everything gets x plus 3. Plus 3 and x plus 3. Okay, so now let's reduce here. So I have x plus 2 and x plus 2 reduced. So I'm left with my x and x plus 3. x times x plus 
minus, so x plus 3 reduces with x plus 3, so I'm left with 8 times x minus 2. And this is nice, this whole thing reduces with that whole thing, so I'm left with equals 10. All right, now we're going to distribute. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16 equals 10. I'm going to clean it up and combine like terms. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 16 equals 10. It is a quadratic, so it has to equal 0, so I'm going to minus 10. So I get x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. And I'm going to do master product. So I multiply x squared times 6. I get positive 6x squared. So what number is multiply this 6 and give you 5? That would be 3x and 2x. And they are both negative. That gives me negative 5x. Bring down the 6. The x squared. Put your parentheses around it. Now factor by grouping. All right, so one of my... My factor, my GCF is x times x minus 3. I have a negative, so I bring out the negative 2 as my GCF, which is x minus 3 inside. And then I get x minus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. T-chart, I get x equals 2, and x is equal to positive 3. And then remember, you do you want to check this to make sure that it works. All right, so let me just move all this stuff out of the way so I can see my equation. Okay, so there's my equation. Here's my solutions that I got. X equals 2, X is equal to 3. But now notice when I plug in 2 here, I get 2 minus 2 is 0. I have a 0 in the denominator. That can happen. So it's undefined, so I have to cross that off. That's an extraneous root, so make sure you cross it off, though. All right, now let's try 3 when we plug in 3. So I get 3 minus 2 is 1. That's good. 3 plus 3 is 6. That's good. And since this here are these, are, these are the factors of this guy, this, I don't need to check that. That's good. All right, so therefore my only solution, my solution set is 3. Okay, so that's it, and have a good night.